Folks, Tuesday night, welcome aboard. Between the Rolls is here, uh, and it's a special episode, a special episode of Iron DM, so we're glad you can be here. Uh, we'll go ahead and explain more about what this is in just a few minutes. First off, let's get the rigmarole out of the way. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, make, uh, uh, I don't remember. I don't know, follower shit. Don't forget, we've got, uh, if you want to buy some stuff like this cool shirt, this cool phone case, uh, that cool uh, pillowcase, the cool bath mat. I don't know. We've got a lot of shit. We even have women's underwear on our not safe for work site. So, you know, check that out. You can't out. see, but Frank is actually modeling some. It's just the I, cameras. I am. No. Normally, I wear it on my head. But tonight, not so much. Uh, don't forget, we are for mature audiences only, even though we're a bunch of dipshits. Uh, most importantly, if you want to be on a one-shot or on this show, not the Iron DM, but some of the others, uh, hit us up, M Hobo Inc., Twitter, or Gmail. Uh, we'll go ahead and get you on there. We always like new people. We've got one tonight called Spencer. Uh, we aren't going to let him talk because that would just be unfair. Uh, we also have some sponsors, and Jeff has appeared. Uh, don't forget, if you need more dice and who doesn't, go over to Twitter at Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, hit them up, see if they've got time to make your stuff. Uh, and if you want something that doesn't stink like my monologue, uh, try some Adventure Scents from oddfishgames.com. 60 different scents, uh, putrid sewers for your boss. Uh, put it in this coffee. It'll be real good. Disclaimer, do not consume any of the uh, Odd Fish Games products. Uh, I spoke with them today. The last of the U.S. Uh, commitment to how to RPG with your cat is going out tomorrow. Uh, international folks, eh, you're going to have to wait a little bit. Uh, and of course, don't forget, we've got the convention coming up in February, February 12th and 13th, Murder Hobo Con. Uh, it's going to be uh, probably lackluster and very ineffective. Uh, probably hanging out with your grandpa a lot. Uh, or it could be really fantastic. It's really hard to tell. Uh, we got a lot of fun stuff planned, so it'll probably be pretty good. Enough of that. Let's go ahead and introduce you to the four people. Uh, oh, also, uh, if you didn't watch our shows last week, uh, they're on YouTube and they're on Twitch. So go watch them. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing them. Uh, the Iron DM episodes are going to be kind of special. Not much of a recap. Uh, first up is Ian. Ian, who are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, uh, I'm Ian and I am not within shin kicking radius of Frank or else I would be correcting him under the table uh, and uh, to say how great our con is going to be, and you should sign up because event registration is open now, and player registration opens up January 14th. So I actually have a lot of really cool things uh, coming out, and we've got some really great G uh, guest GMs that I can't wait to announce once we uh, finalize our schedule. Uh, but I guess you could say I'm a regular here, and I have an almost blank uh, itch, but there will be more content there at some point, so you can click whatever that link is floating somewhere. Someday right. I'll have some good stuff. Nicely done. If only there was an art contest. Ah, uh, but hey, I didn't know how much time to, to occupy here. But uh, for you artists, people out there, we do have a fantastic art contest that we are running, uh, and we will announce the uh, uh, winners at the con. We have three fantastic uh, guest celebrity nerd judges who you may be familiar with, like Margaret Weiss, who's going to be releasing her new and latest Regalance book. Uh, the classic Larry Elmore and Doug Kovacs, the cult classic from DCC and your other favorite games. Uh, so if you would like to have your art gaze upon uh, their eyeballs, submit some stuff. Uh, MurderHobocon.com uh, will link you to our tabletop events page. That's my two and a half minutes over time. So Jesus Christ, are you going to talk all night? Uh, Jeff. Hey, you don't make me con <laughs> ops uh, director uh, without a give. You gave, me, you gave me the platform. All right. <laughs> Uh, Jeff, same question, different uh, answers. Who are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, my name's Jeff. That's about all I can say since uh, Ian took up all my time. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I'm here all night, folks. <laughs> That's nice. And we also have Spencer. Okay, folks. So, <laughs> just kidding, Spencer. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. Um, I've been playing role playing games since I was a wee lad. Uh, I've been working with this guy. On my screen, he's right here, Ian uh, Downshire. Um, I've been working with him since high school, so I already know how long he'll talk. Given the opportunity, he can, but you know what? That's okay. It saves my voice, and I know Jeff's sick, so it saves his voice. Uh, folks, this is a special Iron DM. What we're going to do is we have seven creators. 
we have got a big ass map. It's a continent map. And we've carved that thing up into a bunch of nations. So for the next 11 months, twice a month, uh, we're going to go ahead and discuss socium. Uh, for you nerds out there, that's Latin for partner. That's why I named it that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to cover it from top to bottom over the course of the next 11 months. You know, we aren't going to give you the whole thing until the end when we get it all published. In December, uh, we're going to make some games, some scenarios, and we're going to run those throughout December. That way, I don't have to run the whole fucking show all the time. So that saves me a lot of headaches. So uh, periodically, I'm going to be popping up the window on what we're talking about today. It's just the first overview. It's very nice, uh, but we're going to fill in some of the gaps. In two weeks, some of the other creators are going to come on. They're going to go ahead and give their input. Same thing. If we have a little bit of time, we're going to go ahead and throw out some major timeline items. Uh, Socium is a standard fantasy medieval kind of role-playing game. We didn't go post-apocalyptic. We didn't go Western, yada, yada, yada. So this is the, the true guts of the you know elves and dwarves and gnomes and stuff like that. What's going to make it different is you have seven different creators chiming in on this. And I know Ian and Spencer have already spent a lot of time collaborating on what makes their area uh, go good. So without further ado, let me go ahead and show you what we're talking about. So this is Socium. Um, big, uh, a lot of water. Uh, this was not meant as an entire world, clearly, because there's only a little patch of ice. Uh, but it's got a lot of interesting sites. We're going to be zooming in on some of these things. These numbers that you see, are areas that we're going to cover tonight and in two weeks. These are the unnamed areas at this time. Like I said, each one of us has taken a couple of nations uh, and we've carved them up. The nation letters are in red. Uh, instance, K and I, I took those random rolls, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Ian over here took Q and S. Uh, Jeff went Hi, G, and what was the other one you took? You. You. Uh, oh, the desert lands. So uh, over the next uh, couple of months, we're going to go ahead and start at the top and work our way down. We've got a bunch of topics. So uh, tonight, uh, that's the broad overview. And I could go on and on and on, but I'm not going to because these guys are going to save me from talking a lot. Uh, so we're going to start with the first one. Uh, and we're going to start with a new guy, Spencer, to put him on the spot, make him feel uncomfortable, give him the <laughs> jitters. Uh, he has chosen three areas that he would like to discuss. Uh, and the first one we're going to talk about is uh, Area 11. So right over here uh, is this waterway thing. So Spencer, uh, what'd you call it? Why'd you call it that? And what's so cool about it? So this is Wyvern Pass, and why it's called Wyvern Pass is it is a broken section of land and cliffside with basically an extension of the ocean going between it and the Inland Sea. Um, it was broken up centuries ago when something occurred on what we Ian has dubbed, uh, maybe I'm not talking, yeah, Ian has dubbed the Scorn Isle, um, a massive volcanic explosion and an apocalypse that destroyed area q of uh, the scorned isle whatever was there ran through underground creating wyvern pass and its trip to the volcano 17 um, mount kairos so today okay. it's a massive cliffside on either side that is barely passable um, erosion has taken away some of it and has created these the has created some lands for people to be in um, but has been filled in by the sea and is now this kind of half salt, half freshwater passageway between the two. So now, uh, just out of curiosity, so it's kind of like an estuary where the salt water and the freshwater connect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's uh, the, the, the large inland sea is kind of going outwards, where connecting kind of the river is going one direction, and then this massive kind of cliff face side is on the other side. Might there be wyverns in the area? <laughs> there are definitely wyverns in the Wyvern Pass. It is, uh, since it's a perfect cliffside, it's a, it's a perfect space for wyverns to, that have come in from the mountains to nest and find a place to live 
after this cataclysm. So they've been there for a couple hundred years now. Um, it's really challenging. There's a single uh, bridge workway. If you notice, there's two sets of mountains there um, on either side. That is where the, the bridge is that passes this easily. Um, otherwise, you have to go way far up or down um, the pass to lower lands where the erosion has taken place in order to get across. Have you given any cool names that, and folks at home? Right here under the top, the 11 is another high peak. It matches this one. Have, have yep. you given a given any thought to given that a name, or is that I, I granted that's going to be deeper in a different month? But no, yeah. I haven't. I haven't thought too much about it. I think it's going to be named after um, my Spartacus analog, um, in that there is going to be a, 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 a there was a slave revolt um, that led, and so this group uh, is named after this person, and it's going to be like his span or his pass or his reach, um, something that enables. Uh, the, the the hobgoblins of this region in order to go outwards. Jim's pass. <laughs> Something like that, exactly. <laughs> uh, I promise not to talk a lot. Uh, Ian and Jeff, got any questions for him on Wyvern Pass? Not all of them. <laughs> no, sounds good. In fact, it kind of goes on when you were talking about the slave revolt because in Region U, that's going to be their form of eco economy, which is slaving <laughs> because that yeah. is jeff's nice so and one of the things i was thinking is is they would have people that would basically be robbing or stealing uh hobgoblin women or so they could breed them into better you know mercenaries why hell i pick you guys <laughs> <laughs> Did, didn't even talk about this didn't didn't talk at all no, actually, that, that is that is news. Uh, Jeff, we're going to go with you. Uh, you took a mountain range in G. Uh, this huge range spans uh, north to south. Uh, tell us what you're calling it. All right. So this is going to be uh, the Silver Mountains because uh, there's going to be silver deposits in this mountain. You know, it's real clever there. <laughs> uh, but there's going to be dwarfs that are going to be uh, mining that. Um, and then also uh, half, uh, half doors, half goat people that are going to be in the mountains, which I think would be kind of fun to go with. Um, in 19, I was going to call that uh, Mount Heart um, because the volcano is going to be kind of like a little bit of a shape of a heart. Um, and I haven't figured out for 20 yet. You know what I just figured out? Uh, the folks at home can't see this goddamn map. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about this while I work on that. <laughs> so, um, strike two, Frank. So I guess I can talk about the other region, which is G. Um, uh, and this is going to be basically a lot of centaurs that are going to be the predominant ruling race of that region. And, um, they're actually going to be warring with H, uh, which is uh, the person that has H isn't here right now. But he was talking about he's going to have it where his people are going to be like, uh, they're for pure human and not liking the other races, which will kind of go, you know, with the half human, half horse, you know. And they'll be warring over, especially probably down here at the lower level, uh, that little area is, you know, since it was forest, they'll be stealing it and going back and forth. There, that looks much better. <laughs> well, I, I had, a, to, to be fair, I had a couple of different ways I was going to do this. I chose consistently the wrong way each time. So now I've learned. Uh, that sounds good. Ian uh, has not chosen anything. So he you gets, said you were going to roll. He gets or this. Give, give me the things near me. I'll, you know, I gonna take eight, nine, or what? I don't, if it's not claimed. Uh, you know what? No, nope, three is taken. Uh, eleven's taken. How about eight? Give me eight. What's this body of water called? Uh, you know what? That will be predetermined, um, but I am imagining that that is a area where um, does this? Are we assuming that there is a a ice cap or no ice cap? 
The only ice is in the north. Okay. So a completely Aquan thing. Uh, so then I'm going to imagine that uh, for a predominant uh, expanse of eight is going to be extensive coral reefs. Uh, so there will be different shoals of exotic fish, crustacean life. Uh, and, and with that, there will be different zones where there will be different types of um, like cephalopod-esque creatures, mollusks and other things. Um, perhaps that could be something that if we wanted to build that out further, maybe to find those hexes, we could have there be uh, aquatic, I can make some aquatic hex maps for that for uh, aquatic crawling. Um, so that I would probably build a pretty diverse ecosystem there that would uh, appeal for aquan based characters. Um, and especially too, I, I could probably imagine that at the far edge of that tectonic plate where it drops off and we have that dark region that it's a deep trench uh, where there will probably be some leviathans or some very uh, rare things that are, are down there. So maybe some deep sea hex crawl. You got a name for it? Ah, you know, I will need to think of that. I was going to think of something kind of token about like this, the, 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 like the Azure coast or uh, the coast of taken. college. Or something like that. That's taken. You can't steal but, that. Greyhawk will be all over our ass. I see. That's what I'm saying. Like, uh, I can be extemporaneous, but a good name, I will need to think of something. Probably, uh, you know, Rainbow Coast. Is that taken? Prismatic, prismatic Coast. Prismatic Sea. Either of those. Yeah, Is that I, trademark? I like that. No, I don't think so. All right. Then it'll be colorful, <clears throat> coral, and uh, biodiverse. Nice. Bio. Uh, folks, I've taken a couple of items because not all of the 26 nations have taken. Uh, one of them is this spit of land in the far east. Uh, and uh, without going into detail on those, uh, the thing I will tell you about is this area right here. I have named it the Baphos Strait. Uh, one of the backstories to this entire nation is the people that live on the north used to live over here and uh, they're dwarves and they had to tunnel to get away from those that would like to see them wiped out and they ended up on that offshore big old Australia looking island uh, but this area is Baffos Strait uh, it is considered a little bit more shallow because of the light blue color. Uh, the darker blue here is medium ocean. The dark, darkest of the blue is the deep ocean. So you've got this Baphos Strait, and it's going to be a sea lane uh, used by a lot of different things. And I would not be a bit surprised if pirates uh, love this area. Uh, it uh, sits just south of the Sea of Storms, which is right through here. So uh, a little bit gamey on that one, uh, but uh, certainly who doesn't love Corsairs? Um, back to Spencer, you also chose 15. Uh, this mountain range here. Uh, and it's kind of extensive. It goes all the way up to Wyvern Pass. Spencer, what do you call this thing? I haven't. Hmm. I'm thinking. Of, I'm thinking of a good name. I'm trying to think. You you were talking earlier about having a a cultural uh, significance, like a cultural marker for each of your regions. So I'm trying to think of a, of a better cultural marker to understand how to how to maybe a real slightly real world analog um, to my hobgoblins and. Um, as as a not, not not to go too too into um, my own backstory as as a lover of Japanese culture, um, I'm a Japanese teacher by trade. Um, I may have my hobgoblins be a little bit of kind of a, a bit more of a Japanese origin, and so give it give it a name that can kind of fit what's going on there. Um, so the Japanese name for mountain is Yama, and so that makes me think of the concept of maybe like. Hmm. I'm gonna to go too too obvious. Ian, throw me a throw me a bone. What are you so, thinking? I mean, if you have a wyvern pass. I mean, looking at yeah, the shape of that, could that be something? Ooh, could those like mountains the, be like a spine of a of a dragon or a famous worm, a uh, teeth of oh. a creature like that? Um, because imagining there's a lot of jagged there and it's upheaval. It almost looks like it's a curled up 
Sing. I like I like I like Stinger, right? Like Sting. I could see maybe that. maybe yeah, because it kind of looks like a Stinger to me in terms of how it curls up and goes around her claw. Like a manticore bar. Mm, um, yes. Um. I guess it depends if you want to bring any more like East Asian mythology with what creature that could represent. Because in my region, since no one's claimed Z and Y, I was thinking about building a little bit more East Asian and like yeah, uh, flair to there. So there's so let's let's go with that. the uh, let's go with the the dragon's claw, right? And so this whole area is going to be named more after the things and items, right? We're talking we're talking about we Byron Passwell, the dragon's claw mountains, and so these are these are going to be really sharp and jagged peaks that are hard to cross in terms of on top of them because of how up and down they go. And if you notice that like, that's why they're so dragging this all over the place. Um, and with these mountains, what I've been thinking is that the best way to traverse these mountains is through subterranean tunnels. Um, Bugbears, hobgoblins, goblins, very good at traveling through tunnels and, and kind of figuring out and finagling engineering different ways to get across, you know, steep caverns and, and other really challenging hazardous places and so that's how they get around and not a lot is actually built on the outside of these mountains but everything is more inside and kind of depth now there are on the lowlands and kind of the fields yeah that's where you see cities which where people actually live well, most of these most of these these hobgoblins really live but all around these mountains the dragon's claws mountains they live in the tunnels kind of carving these out but of course they have to constantly carve these tunnels out because there's an active volcano, and so they constantly collapse. It's a dangerous life living here. As a parallel, this is a quick aside. It's my region S. There's also my civilization is primarily in those tunnels as well. So there could be some uh, interaction we can talk about later. Oh, trade, trade. Sure, we'll say trade. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> you know what? To uh, tag on to what Spencer said, uh, I like how uh, we're going to use. Uh, certain areas uh, that match up uh, with our own world. Uh, over on my section, uh, I have a Vietnamese culture. Uh, I've got a Romanian culture. And then I have, uh, I forget what the others are. Uh, but yeah, I like that because that way we can go ahead and blend and give depth to each side and go ahead and uh, what's that word? Uh, steal from different cultures. So. Uh, good job on that one, Spencer. Good, good, good DMs borrow, great DMs steal. That's right, and and just rename it. It's like sampling, right? Vanilla ice. We're just sampling stuff. Uh, Jeff, you also grabbed nineteen. Uh, you had you're a volcanologist, so you have mm -hmm. this uh, volcano. Uh, you got a name for it, or what do you think the backstory is on that? Um, yeah, I think you were messing around <clears throat> when I said that, um, I was going to name that the heart mountain cause it's going to have look like the shape of a heart. Okay. Um, has it blown up before or something? Well, yeah. So like they also refer to it as a bleeding heart as lava going out from it. Ooh, nice. You know, that'd make an excellent, uh, tie into valentine's day which just happens to be when murder hobo comes going on just saying. <laughs> uh you got any backstory yet and uh, again folks uh this is just the early stages so some of these things may change uh i'm not putting the screws to these guys i'm just kind of curious uh but jeff do you have any backstory or uh thoughts on what you're going to do with that um well uh, in the mountain region itself is going to be the dwarfs and uh uh, half dwarfs, half goats, people. Um, this whole region is going to be kind of like the tribal clans. That's how they're going to rule. So each little area is going to have, um, you know, there'll be their own tribe and then there'll be a greater, you know, council, war council or tribal council. Um, there's also going to be regions of, you know, humans um, that are going to be, uh, you know, basically just colonizing or you know that they're going to allow them to stay there um and then the majority is going to be centaurs that, that's going to be the ruling class or the it will be the tribal chief will be the centaurs uh and you know what i've got to ask um uh, is it going to be a gotar or a sen at <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, I have to figure out the name. I saw something on a homebrew that they mentioned that. And I just thought it would be kind of cool being in a mountainous region, a mountain goat to go, but then also being small like a dwarf and having that same dwarven, you know, feistiness. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that. I, as soon as you mentioned it to me, I'm like, oh, this is, this is going to be so wrong. Because all I can see, as soon as you emailed it to me, I'm like, can halflings steal those and use them as speed? <laughs> so I, I'm really curious as to where that one is going. So, okay, we've got Heart Mountain. Uh, Ian, I see that you wanted number nine. Uh, ha. Number nine is at the southern tip. Uh, I'm looking at a bay or a waterway. What do you get? Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm imagining this as like a, like a gulf or a bay, um, but it would be something like the unquiet gulf. Uh, as we have a lot of seismic activity to the northwest of there and we have a desert to the nine, I'm imagining that there is a lot of geothermic activity happening in the bay itself that's leading to that change in climate. So we are having... Um, more of a like winds going from east to west, blowing that humidity and causing that rainforest and jungle activity. So this would be a bay where it's there's gurgling, there is roiling pockets and thermal vents that are coming up, um, and it is something where perhaps the cultures and why they're to be developed, uh, maybe even to some of the hobgoblins as well or the goblinoids. Maybe there could be a, a thought of that there are restless or angry spirits or something in that region because there's these constant fumes of, of, um, of smoke sometimes, or of steam, perhaps maybe at times it could even change smells depending on like there's a like sulfur's pocket or something to leaving there being an eerie thing there. Uh, and perhaps that also pushes more biodiversity south of there to that more coral region is that that constant changing of um, uh, temperatures and volcanic gases and other things may may for more extremophiles in that region still could be sailed and 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 um, navigated, but perhaps also causes a little bit of, of a challenge for um, uh, passage between Y and U. Okay. Now, uh, I, I was going to say also imagining between <clears throat> nine and eight, thinking about building on eight. I'll probably include another culture there, another racial racial group there that probably has a whole civilization on boats and rafts uh, that may also trade, you know, move in that region, depending on um, uh, a different types of activity. Nice. Now the boiling and roiling, is it here in nine or is it higher in this Northern region? Because this is water as well. Uh, I wasn't too sure how far nine would go. I would imagine that uh, <clears throat> there's probably I mean, I don't know who has two and how much you want to collaborate on that, Spencer and Jeff, about that region in between. Maybe there could be more activity of that if you want to have that. Um, I don't know how that was going to mess with the biome fringes on T. So I don't want to, to speak too, too much to that yet. Sure. So I... I really like that concept because that enables like there's still some con like some communication, some trade between the southeastern region and rest and water. But one of the concepts I was really looking forward to is that the hobgoblins are trying to control all trade with kind of like the exotic rich areas of jungle. And so that they, that's one reason they're so militaristic and are trying to protect what's going on is that they have to tax everybody and protect the secrets of whatever further from them. Um, and that was going to be one of my uh, concepts of conflict between R and T is someone wants to build a canal. And so if that waterway, is, if, if the real close area up near T is still navigable, that's awesome. But like even just where, where the volcano is south, that'd be perfect. Though. That makes it like you can still travel there, but it's hard. Yeah, I, like that. I imagine too that you could have specialized navigators that maybe also quasi shamanistic that can read the disquiet of the angry whatever that's causing that. I mean, it could just be natural, but still having that that uh, in tune with the land um, that could be whatever classes. If it's going to be druidic, if it's going to be something more mystic, could be interesting, but also pose some interesting challenges to people in T and U and how they see that, how they want to conquer that. So that could be the materialistic world versus that more mystic uh, as well. 
You know, I'm I'm thinking since you made the comment with shamans, I'm thinking <clears throat> your shamans are water guys, but uh, the source of the problem is a fire guy. <laughs> So I'm, I'm seeing a nice conflict there. Jeff, what do you think of the idea there? Um, yeah, I like it. <clears throat> with with you, you um, they're actually not going to be really getting much into the water other than probably maybe doing some fishing uh, for food on the, on the coast. Um, most of that I, I see is other countries going to them to be able to pick up mercenaries and other uh, goods. <laughs> you know, if one of you three wants to take coffee, you can have uh, ETI there because you guys seem to be fixated on the slaving trade, for God's <laughs> sake. Uh, but but that's okay. Uh, we'll break over to me. Uh, I have I. Uh, I'll give you a little hint. This mountain range here in the green, it's called the Carpathians because the forest gnomes that live here uh, Romanian. Uh, so I have taken on my uh, precursor. Uh, I'm making that a Romanian based uh, forest gnome place uh, with this area called the Hinterland, which if you look it up, it is an area flanked by river and mountains. So uh, there is a big story coming, but that's uh, next time when we go into the nation building. Uh, but the Carpathians here, uh, much like uh, Spencer's Mountains, very difficult to traverse, uh, not a lot of interior transportation options. Uh, when we discuss it on nations, there are only three cities uh, in the Carpathians. Uh, the capital and two flanking ones just off this swamp and just off this cove. Uh, but these mountains are horrific uh, and it takes something special to go ahead and get a pass uh, to get on that road. Those found on that road without a pass, uh, you know, what's the thing? Uh, get killed. <laughs> so uh, that will be the adventure hook there, but I am going to just hijack a lot of uh, the Carpathian mystery. Who knows? Maybe Strahd lives there or, you know, a better uh, vampire named uh, Bobby. Bobby that doesn't have copyright infringement. That's right. <laughs> uh, Count Steve of the Carpathian Mountains. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's my other spot there. Spencer, uh, your last one is 17, the volcano. Yes, uh, I'm calling this Mount Kairos, um, K-A-I-R-Y-C-E, -I -I Kairos. I'm sorry, um, one, Mount, one, one more time. I'm yeah, K-A-I-R-Y-C-E, the Mount okay. Kairos. Um, it. It, it is going to be a semi-dormant volcano that causes earthquakes throughout the region, which collapse the tunnels of the goblins and bugbears and the hobgoblins, um, except for the temples and shrines dedicated to the ancestors of the goblinoids. Um, so there's going to be a massive temple near the core of the volcano. Um, in reality, uh, that is not a temple dedicated to their ancestors. It's a dedica temple dedicated to something else. Uh, something worse. Something much, much worse. Oh, man. Real Deity life, Steve. <laughs> yeah, Deity Steve, which... Uh, which is the reason that Q is no longer around. Nice. That, that, is, that is nice. Yeah. Now, uh, just FYI, this thing right here, these three hexes. I'm guessing those are wastelands? Wastelands caused by lava flow. So, Perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it blew north. So I like that. Ian or Jeff, you got anything on that aspect? On um, adding to that? Mm-hmm. Adding yeah. or questions, either or. Yeah, uh, so if you look at the, the northeast section of Q, you'll mm -hmm. notice that I have two random hexes of Forest uh, Mountain. So in between that area and um, is where there was a, a, a larger, um, it's a collapsed caldera of a volcano because that was where this apocalyptic eruption had happened. Uh, and like Spencer mentioned, there's a Chthonian thing 
uh, that had burrowed its way over and re-emerged over towards uh, at 17. Um, so that'll be some interesting things uh, as we collaborate and build that further. But um, it also explains to some of the shelf and the tectonic things and we're thinking globally. Nice. Okay. Jeff, got anything there? Um, I don't. Cool. Uh, Jeff, your last one is 20. And I think that's north, isn't it? Yeah, it's that uh, it another is. volcano up there. Um, I haven't thought of a name for that or what that's going to be. Although I did think of uh, having a lot of acidity in there. And so like the tribe that would be around there instead of using metal would be using uh, obsidian, you know, for their daggers and whatnot. Nice. I can see that. Any giants in this mountain range by chance? I hadn't thought of that, but that might be something uh, good. I For a while I was toying with the idea of having drow in the mountains. Sure. Yeah, that'll work. Certainly, uh, uh, maybe adjacent tunnels to your dwarven population and your gotars. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so trademarking that. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I, I always remember uh, the old Greyhawk map uh, with Jotuns and barrier peaks and things of that nature. And uh, I'm wondering... I'm wondering if you could even have, do you have any ancient technology lined up in that area? Um, what I was kind of thinking of is having some fairy folk um, in like the forest region mm -hmm. and having uh, having like basically a uh, underground uh, water that was somehow magical that gave people, you know, like if you got hurt, you could drink the water and it'd give you health. So the Which exact opposite of Mexico. Exactly. <laughs> you don't get nice. Montezuma's revenge. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I like that. I like the fairy folk there. Uh, as an aside, no one took F and J. So I did a historic piece on that. Uh, it's the same nation. There's just a really big problem. Uh, and these guys down here are named things like Gaius. Lucindus, <laughs> Romanesque. Uh, F doesn't have much name. Uh, but I'm trying to link into what Jeff's going to be doing with his 14 to be the precursor or the cause for F. If you're, uh, if you're stealing cultures, why not the Etruscans? Because you have that whole inlet there. I mean, I mean that could just be, I mean, yeah, if you're going to steal... Yeah, well, I've got I've got too much shit on the Romans to not use it, but I do like the Etruscans, uh, and I do like uh, the two bays um, because L uh, and L will get named later, which is seven, um, and that is right here. This uh, I, I'm dying for somebody to hijack that one and tell me what it is uh, because I'm just curious. Uh, Ian, I did give you another roll, and I gave you, you did number nine already. Number six, actually, since we're here, I gave you that one as well. All right. Uh, I'm looking at the area, so I am seeing uh, a shelf there in some shallow regions. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be kind of curious to learn a little bit more about that uh, volcano, especially 20 being there at the edge of that shelf, what has led to that um geomorph there so uh perhaps at one point there was uh, some other civilization or there was a country that sank or uh, imagining that they're like looking at how that area is it looks like it's sunk inward maybe just natural formation or there was a split looking at how the areas on e and g have the same mountainous area so it could just be a, a big fissure uh and perhaps it's widening and that is something that is causing uh, some coastal damage in that area, uh, more like slow erosion and nothing large, but perhaps there are, there is, uh, and this would be something we need to collaborate on, if there is any uh, geologic instability, if they're like underwater earthquakes that cause flooding or if they're causing issues because there's a lot of green along that area. 
Um, so I, I want to make sure that since there's so many other people's areas that touch in it, that we'd want to make sure that we agree on what effect that has. Um, but I think that's an area of change, um, perhaps. I don't know. What do you think, Spencer? I really like the idea of, of something that is sunken right there, of, 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 of culture that was lost underneath those waves. Um, because I agree that area with you have the mountains that are on like and then you have the mountains of 14 that kind of come around as well. But those are some really high sections of land and then immediately drops off into the sea. And so that, that creating this kind of like, like maybe there was once a plane that went across F and yeah. D that went across the whole section. And then the people who were there, it just got boom, put underground. Um, that could have been from some malicious event. So maybe there was tunnels under there that were dug by enemies that, that they then m- magically sunk the entire culture underground. Maybe it was something went wrong. Um, or maybe it was something they were like, you know, they were attempting to raise themselves up and they wanted to bring themselves above the water line that was coming and accidentally put themselves underneath it. I like the idea of having, depending on how shallow these areas are, having like various levels of perhaps ruins. Um, that could be something where there may be, um, uh, if people are able to harness magic for breathing underwater or exploiting um, different creatures that can breathe underwater. Um, but that could be some interesting, like sub aquan uh, spelunking and, um, you know, uh, underwater dungeon dive. You know. And if there was a culture that was there that has been lost, what happened to those people? Were all of them lost, or did some of them adapt to their new aquatic life? Yeah, sea zombies. Too. Yeah. Sea zombies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the, the waterlogged dead would be kind of pretty frightening. It's just rotting corpses down there. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Well, we could we can collaborate on that. Jeff, what do you think? I like. Yeah, I kind of like that because with the you know. They say centaurs are supposed to be uh, nomadic, and so that might have been a pathway for them to, you know, journey. And now they can't journey that way anymore. I like that idea. I, you know what? Uh, what if this was the waterway, and these two red bastards blew up and created a mountain? And this, these two areas used to be connected. Probably mm. due to those damn sea zombies. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I just, just overall, like, I'm like, I don't know if this, this was completely random. I'm just imagining there has to be some type of geologic issue under this because of how your plates look and how many volcanoes there are. That's not normal because all those are going to be connected underground by magma channels. So, especially this this very narrow channel right here, uh, because each hex is about twenty miles. Uh, but you know, they're not going to be perfectly sawed off. So this could be almost like the, uh, uh, the Bosphorus, yeah. Turkey and Constantinople. So I, I'm liking where this is going. And I, as always, it, it's nice to get collaboration to this level because I look at it one way and you guys throw out different ideas and it's like, that is really golden. Uh, and I am no volcanologist. Uh, I'm only a half-assed map maker, and <laughs> uh, and that is purely uh, bragging on my rights. Uh, I'm not going to do another one uh, because I've been too busy with the other things, and I've talked too much. So let me kill off the map. Actually, let's uh, widen it out a bit. So there you go, folks. That is the map that we will be working with over the next or over the course of 2022 with adventures to follow in December. So. I'll go ahead and kill this. Totally screw up uh, what I spent probably two hours on today. So I'll retool that by the time we get around to this in the next two weeks. Uh, one of the other things is a fail safe. Uh, I had told these guys was maybe do something on a timeline basis. Uh, now, uh, with Spencer's Wyvern Pass, uh, I, I randomly just pulled out the number 1122. No run no reason uh common year 1122 uh spencer when did wyvern pass become wyvern pass my concept is it happened a few centuries ago so sometime around the year 800 um and so that gives plenty of time for the cultures that are around today to have developed but also give them a sense of history um for like how long it's been that the 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 (laughs) 
previous empire is still around kind of fresh in people's memories that it was in, in their cultural history, that there was something that was back there, but they've kind of forgotten a lot of it, but not all of it. Cool. I like that. Uh, you can so, go ahead, Jeff. Oh, I was wanting to know, are we going to have like a, uh, like before CE? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There so would like, be a there would be a PCE or something like that. Yeah. So what I was thinking was, is this big catatonic event could be what changes it from going from, you know, the common era to the, for the common era. Oh yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. We can, we can tack that on. Uh, no meteor strikes, maybe in three, perhaps. Uh, anybody else? And again, uh, it was just kind of an afterthought on the timeline. Anybody else have a big event that they would like to use uh, in their timeline? I mean, we, we uh, Spencer and I have that shared thing, that cataclysm. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I guess if Spencer, would you want to drill down? I could, you kind of, I have, we have a rough timeline-ish of okay. things that have occurred that we need to just put into relative scale. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, bu building a timeline is a giant pain in the ass for those of you who have not done it because it's great because it gives you a spot for lore. Uh, it's bad when you're like, oh, I, I wrote this and this is awesome and it doesn't fit the timeline at all because I'm a moron. Uh, and I have been a moron way too many times. I had, I had imagined that the, ori the, the, the originating race that was on the peninsula of Q before it became an island was one of the early and ancient races and was one that fell the hardest and why they're just wiped um, both they're wiped um, off because of the cataclysm itself but any traces of history and lore and culture that existed was forcibly and uh, uh, rapidly destroyed by the hobgoblins out of spite and cultural purity okay i'll buy so, that and, and you guys have uh, discussed six being an area where it could pose uh, some underwater cultures as well as nine, uh, certainly off the coast of Jeff's desert. Uh, that would be interesting. Who knows? Maybe they had a nuclear power plant go nuclear and it just ran through the pipeline and that's what created Wyvern Pass. But who knows? So we'll figure that one out along the way. Uh, in two weeks, we'll go ahead and have a different panel on here. I'll have my shit together better by that time, maybe, uh, so that you guys can follow along from the get-go. Uh, and then next month, we'll start on our nation building uh, with broad overviews of, well, this is the nation of uh, BFE, and it is right in the center of things. Um, so that's what we're looking forward to. Uh, if you have any ideas, uh, because, yes, we're seven DMs, but we always accept uh, opinions and suggestions from everybody else. Uh, and we do still have a few nations. If you're like, oh shit, this looks good. I want to get in on it. Uh, I can give you the butt end nations, the worst of the worst. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm, claim, I'm claiming the rest on that, uh, the end of that continent. And I can always pull uh, Spencer's brain at that, but uh, give me all that life? jungle and that swamp. Uh, okay. Um, I'm looking forward to an opportunity to make it non-typical white person medieval cruttery because there's enough of that. You're going to do yawn tea, aren't you? Uh, now I am. I was not thinking yawn tea, but God, I now I am. Tea. I hate yawn tea. They're just horrific. Uh, but no, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, I, I think this is a decent start. Uh, it'll be curious uh, to see how the other folks do it on the 18th. Uh, and with the, the setup I have in my head, uh, I think I'm going to do it like the open shows, like Cacophony. That way, it doesn't matter how many people are on here, we can still share the screen and not butt anybody out. Uh, but my overlay was kind of nice. Oh, well. Uh, move on. When you're faced with a problem, figure it out or move past it. So uh, with that, we'll wrap it up a little bit short uh, or early, rather. Uh, Spencer, first time here. What would you think? I had a that, blast. That, it was really that fun. That was the best monologue until you unmuted yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you can take a lesson from that, Frank. Uh, Dang it. Uh, <laughs> I, I had a blast. It was great, guys. Thanks for having me. 
we're looking forward to the rest of your ideas, Spencer. Uh, it should be fun uh, as long as I keep the screw ups to a minimum. But Jeff and Ian know that's uh, not going to happen. I I wing this and half ass it all the time. Uh, Jeff, uh, if your throat can handle it, what'd you think? Well, I liked it. I think it's going to be a good project. Can't wait to see the finished. The uh, finish will just suck ass. Uh, and, and you know what? I did forget one thing at the top, Ian. I will get to you next, but uh, I have a World Anvil subscription, and we'll probably also put it in there as well. Uh, I, If you thought the overlay was bad, I'm way worse at World Anvil. Uh, however, if you go to the con... They've given a three-month Guildmaster subscription uh, as a raffle prize. So that's like 150 bucks or something. So, you know, murderhobocon.com badges go on or go on sale soon. Okay, Ian, uh, aside from my clear lack of vision on how to do this, what'd you think? Hey, I, I will take anything and be extemporaneous. So um, I'm excited because I have got a, I've already built out the templates that are in the, or started to in the, the shared drive. So I've got a lot of really cool things with S that I'd love to be able to get into. Quick aside, uh, Amphibian, mostly uh, race that is going to be inhabiting that. Uh, so I'm really excited to, to bring that out and then build some unique classes and some races for people. Um, I'm also wondering, should we at some point for our viewer base uh, create like a blog or something so they can see works in progress? Because otherwise, if we go a month in between things, uh, they will have a way to connect and give feedback. So just as a thought, if we want to have something uh, where we can pump out our stuff at a time. I don't know about Spencer and Jeff, but what I heard was uh, Ian wants to create a blog, and I'm all in favor of that. <laughs> hey, well, if I've got spoons between doing con ops, um, sure, um, I can... Add that to my mountain of to-do tasks. Wow. Well, I got uh, cacophony. I've got uh, calamity A and B. I've got the between the roles, not including this. I have my publishing. I got the murder hobo con crap that you keep stuffing down my throat. Uh, <laughs> our producer is just so caring. That's the important thing. Uh, but yeah, I, I I honestly do think a blog or at least some kind of write-up would be a good idea. I know with World Anvil, you can open it up to where it's a public item. So for those of you familiar with World Anvil, please uh, let me know. I don't have much time to go through the YouTube videos, but a quick lesson on it would be awesome. But we can uh, also share it there. Oh, uh, awesome. <laughs> should um. I'll second the vote for uh, Ian to do the blog. Uh, there you go. Motion Thank carries. You. Thank you for your decisive leadership. <laughs> See, that's Competence is always punished. Um, <laughs> but that's, a, that's what you get for volunteering a good idea. Uh, yeah, sort but of no. Life. Uh, folks, we're, we're really looking forward to this project. As you can tell, uh, we think it's going to be a success and, you know, we'll probably even publish it. That way you can play in the world of Socium and, uh, destroy everything we planned with your own bullshit homebrew, but that's what D&D is all about. So uh, let's see if I can get this right this time. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit with us about D&D or this project, hit us up on our Discord. Uh, if you want to be on the show, either in a one shot next Saturday or between the roles, not Iron DM, hit us up, mhobo Inc, Twitter or Gmail. If you need some dice and who doesn't need dice, hit up on Twitter at Pirate Dog Dice. And if you want your items to smell great, unlike my intro, oddfishgames.com, 60 different scents. They also have how to RPG with your cat. They're finishing up that Kickstarter, like I said earlier. And they also have the writing project called Shine. So if you want to write gooder than me, uh, check out their Shine system. Coming soon, their RPG specific Shine system. Uh, folks, for all of us here, uh, we will remind you that uh, Thursday is the Cred Campaign, the Cthulhu-based horror series. On Saturday, we return to Calamity. Not sure if it's A or B yet. Uh, might be A, and that means 
zombies in the ruined town. Otherwise, it's going to be the folks from Toad Town uh, taken off. Uh, and then maybe even Sunday Margu. See, Ian, I got a lot of irons in a freaking fire here. Uh, folks, we really appreciate your time, whether you're watching this live or on the audio podcast or on the video stream. Uh, so we will end it tonight. With a big uh, kiss and wave and say thanks. Mm-hmm. And Bye, a big everybody. reminder to sign up for uh, murderhobocon.com. That registration is open. We are also still accepting sponsors and vendors if you would like to donate uh, towards charity. So uh, love to have you. Check out our website and um, click a link that might be somewhere that will also direct you to. Well, it was down there, but now it's not. Uh, and also... Don't forget to give two thumbs up when I tweet out, Ian's going to do a blog. Because <laughs> he'll really I'm run out of thumbs. That, and he'll do this to me. So, folks, we will see you on Thursday for the Cred Campaign. You guys have a good night and Happy New Year. Bye.